established in the previous segment that in a regressive tax, income and the effective tax rate are inversely related. This graph shows the regressive nature of the tax structure in Texas, which heavily emphasizes sales and excise taxes and property taxes. Note that the lowest income households in Texas, those earning less than $27,000 annually, pay an effective sales tax rate of 12.4%, while the highest income households, those earning over $117,000 annually, pay an effective tax rate of only 4.9%. The effective tax rate decreases as household income increases, despite the fact that the same nominal tax rate is applied regardless of household income. This is the essence of a regressive tax system. Recall that Texas depends heavily on the general sales tax and excise taxes to generate state revenues. The general sales tax accounts for well over one half of all of the tax revenues collected by the state. Motor vehicles, sales and rental taxes, motor fuels, taxes, and tobacco, cigarette, tobacco, and alcoholic beverage taxes account for another 22% of state tax revenue. Few analysts dispute the argument that these excise taxes are highly regressive. The economic burden of these taxes falls disproportionately on the lowest income earning Texans. The regressive structure of tax policy in Texas is not a new phenomenon. Note that the lowest 20% of income earners in Texas in the mid-1990s paid an effective tax rate on sales and property taxes combined of just over 17%, while the highest 20% of income earners paid an effective tax rate of about 35 to 6.5%. The decreasing effective tax rate over each successive income group indicates how the economic burden of sales and property taxes fall most heavily on the lowest income groups.